In this video, we're going to talk about why you shouldn't compete and why the current trend of people wanting to compete is ridiculous. Mm. We are. <laughs> so we're Dan and Mike. We do videos all about fitness, nutrition, training, eating, stupid challenges, spoof videos. Yeah. So if you like that sort of stuff, stick around for a lighter-hearted view of the fitness industry. Anyway, competing. Yep. So current trend at the moment of every Tom, Dick and Harry, John, Jane, Sarah wanting to compete. Everyone seems to want to compete at the moment. Um, so we just thought we'd give our tuppence worth on probably why you shouldn't. I don't know anyone called Joan competing, I'll be honest. No, I don't. I just was thinking of random Joan? Yeah, was she in the Masters? Yeah, the Masters category, yeah. yeah. Granny category, yeah. she was. Yeah, like everybody, it's because it's fashionable on um, social media, isn't it? Yeah. It's fashionable. Oh, I could do that. I can get up on stage. Oh, it looks easy, that. You know, just go to the gym a bit. I think, I think it's one of those things where people see someone's amazing physique on stage and they assume if they lose body fat, they're going to look like that. And yeah. they think that everyone looks like that underneath. And the reality is, some of these athletes are so genetically blessed, they look incredible. And this isn't a go at people who compete because some of them look insane there. But again, you have to remember their mindset and their adherence levels and their desire to be up on that stage looking the best they can look is unbelievable. It's not as believable. believable. It's second to none. If you're looking to compete, the first time you get on stage, you will not look like them. Yeah. It's quite disrespectful to think you can. It's like me watching Cristiano Ronaldo on TV and being like, I can look all that. It's, it's a sport at the end of the day, and the, the the people who are the best at it are the most passionate, the most driven, and a lot of people just want it because they want a new fucking Instagram like picture, and that's it. Like, and that's it's, it's not enough for the for the amount of effort that it takes, and the amount of dedication, the amount of sacrifice that you've got to that you've got to give. It's like it, unless you absolutely love it and you are you know gifted, like if you're genetically blessed, then yeah. yeah. But there's a lot of people who shouldn't be on stage. Like, yeah, they look great for the beach or whatever. Like, fine, you can see abs and stuff, and but their frame's all wrong. Their posing's not very good. Like, yeah, and, and it can lead to other issues after that. Like, it can obviously lead to quite a lot of disappointment. And then, but yeah, the side of competing that no one really talks about. Everyone sees the pictures. They see the stage pictures. They see the sparkly bikinis or the lovely board shorts. Um, or the trunks. Don't forget. The, ooh, don't forget the thong. Or the trunks, maybe. Um, the problem is, no one really talked about the other side of, of competing, which is post-show, um, but also all the issues that kind of rise, especially with the rise of obviously people wanting to compete, means that the rise of shit coaching was out there as well. Mm. Prep coaches who specialise in it and uh, basically, a lot of the time, develop eating disorders in their clients. Brill. It's just what you want, isn't it? Yeah, most other things. Send her a picture of your dick. Yeah, just send dick pics, why don't you? Uh, that's fine, that'll spare one. You're obviously going to get very, very food focused. Um, I would say that that's probably... Inevitable. Uh, yeah, inevitable. Yeah. At least 95% of the cases, like, yeah. surely. Um, you'll see people with, like, food lists, post show, this is what I want to eat, this, yeah. this, this, and this, and this. Obviously, like, lack of libido, so... I didn't, like, after my first show, I didn't have an erection for six months. Didn't have a penis. I'm happy for, to say that. Didn't have a penis. Well, that's why, yeah. <laughs> can't get an erection. Still, can't, still can't get one. There's nothing there. <laughs> no. Extreme tiredness, lethargy, trouble sleeping, um, really, really broken sleep. Like, moodiness, mood swings, like, being uh, short with people. You're competing that way. I know, right? <laughs> the, the selfishness of the sport, because it does kind of have to be your main priority. Mm -hmm. Like, you've got to forsake other events, and yeah. people might get a little bit like, mm, well, what are they doing, or whatever. Yeah. So there's that kind of thing, and then, like, when dance is after, when the goal's gone, there's like, the, that's being removed, that's not there anymore, there's nothing keeping you lean. And then people can almost feel a little bit lost, and then they'll start to eat the foods that they, that they were missing out on, and they can't control yeah. their eating over it, because they've got dysregulated like hunger and satiety hormones yep. they just keep eating and keep eating and they've been so deprived for such a long time that when they've started they almost can't stop and then they'll see the scale weight rise and then and then they'll panic because oh no I'm not as lean as what I was but yeah. they can't actually see what's in the mirror they still are lean but they kind of get a little bit dysmorphic with it yeah the, the body dysmorphia stuff is, is massive because you get people who go on stage and then straight after the show they're like oh, i'm going to try and hold this condition you're not going to be able to no like it's ridiculous like it's you're too lean your body's fighting you he wants to eat food you need, too to, lean. You need to put on a bit of, you need to put on a bit of body weight yeah for everyday life too lean right it's not it's not healthy to be that lean it's not healthy and if you think about what it took to do to get there the hours of cardio and the restricted yeah. food just by by common sense would dictate that actually that if you wanted to maintain that you would have to keep doing those things to stay like that yeah once you start seeing that weight go on after the show you start thinking you're fat 
and then you have that, I I that issue with your own image and with how you feel about yourself. And then you try and you put on a bit of weight. And then I've seen it so many times when you compete. Six to eight weeks after they competed, I need to diet again. I need to diet again. No, you don't. You should not. That be is dieting. the last thing you need to do is to diet. You need to get back on maintenance calories. You need to find those maintenance calories and push them up and get to a place where you're training hard, you're feeling strong, you're feeling good, your mental health's back where it should be, like your, your view of your body, your view of your physique. Um, like people are just so afraid to talk about this sort of stuff. They just think that they should be able to maintain that physique year round. And, mm. and this is my biggest issue with the whole thing is that you have to go into the sport of competing, understanding these issues, knowing exactly what's going to happen, having a coach who knows what's going to happen, who can take you through it properly. Um, because the amount of coaches that take someone for a prep and then the day the show's done, they just leave them. They're like, oh, that's it, done now. And unfortunately, people are at their most vulnerable straight after a show yeah. and it's not if you're watching this and you've got into a cycle of binge eating and not liking your physique or wanting to diet six weeks after or whatever you're not alone like there's a lot of people lots who go through that um it's normal um unfortunately in the, in the sport it's normal and it shouldn't be normal you should have good coaches who know what they're doing with these people you have to dedicate a severe amount of energy time and sacrifice like we talked about friends family support network everything has to be in place it's not something that you just fancy sticking on a bikini or a pair of shorts or trunks to get up on stage and think, oh, it'd be all right. Um, there are a lot of sides of it that people just don't talk about. Everyone talks about the, the, the great side, the glitz, the glamour, the physique, the package, all that shit. But no one talks about the realities of what it's like afterwards. Uh, and it's important people know that. That being said, obviously, if you are good at the sport or you do want to take the sport forward, um, it can be a very rewarding sport mm. indeed. The more you do it, the better you get at it, the better you get at dieting, the better you get at reversing and recovering, yeah. and the more in tune with sort of how you actually look, you do get better. Be realistic with expectations as well. Just remember that, you know, in this sport that there are there is assistance, there is drugs, that, yeah. that they do exist, both male and female, like on drugs and stuff like that. So again, don't get disheartened if the first year you do it, you're not looking like your favourite fucking bikini girl or physique model. Like it might not happen first time yeah. around, right? It's gonna take a long long time it's, it's such a it can be a disheartening sport because like the the amount of effort required like it's not like a football game where you rock up on a, on a sunday or a saturday and you play 90 minutes like this is usually something that somebody's planned for for six months like they've fucking put a lot into it and it can be disheartening yep. like if you don't place or or you don't get the result that you wanted and because it's almost like a dig at you don't look as good as somebody else, which is a horrible thing. Like you can, you can, you don't mind losing a football game or whatever because you might yeah. win the next one. Yeah. Like that's the way it goes. But it can be really disheartening because it's such a solo sport. It's like you don't look as good as those other people. Yeah. And that 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 to somebody who enters into that sport is probably quite disheartening because it's like this is what I've trained for. But you also need to realise that the 10, 15 other people on that stage with you are doing the same things. Yeah. They're doing the same cardio, eating the same foods. Working They're just as hard. Working just as hard. They may be working harder. They might not be working as hard, but that's the way it goes. Um, so just remember that if you're in it, you need to be in the sport properly, not just for the diet and for the show day, but for the off season, for gaining muscle, yeah. for getting a bit fatter, not being content with maybe your body fat levels and things like that. Like all these things happen mm. on a daily. So please don't be one of those people as well that finishes their show and is like, right, I don't need to coach anymore. I'm done. Yeah. Like, the post-show period, arguably, is when you need a coach more than ever because your motivation's low, you've not got a goal in sight, you've not got all that sort of stuff. Like, dieting for a show, like, say so your coach is there to manipulate things and change them, but you should be pretty motivated to, to get pretty lean and get on stage. It's yeah. afterwards that things can get really tough and you need to lean on someone like a coach. Um, so like I said, we've had a lot of great coaches on the channel before who we would trust to, to like say to prep ourselves or to prep other people. Obviously we have a few handful of clients that we prep ourselves as well. Um, but just be careful, do your research, make sure you know what you're getting into with your coach. Do like, not shop on price. It's not something you want to skimp on. It's just, it, don't skimp on it because the, the, the effect there's a reason. Is real bad. Yeah. Like, it, sounds, it sounds like over the top. But like if you, if you, like some of the people who have come through from other coaches because they've shopped on how big they are on Instagram, the yeah. amount of transformations that they've got, which they they don't, they've never spoke to that person, so they don't actually know what's happened with that scenario. Yeah. Like the the price, like people come through, and they, I've seen some real fucked up like cases, like yeah. fucking really really struggling with uh, eating disorders and, and, mm -hmm. and body dysmorphia, like loads of loads of things. So don't shop on price. Like, like Dan says, do your research because it is very, very important. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed that video. Share it with someone who's thinking of competing. Hopefully that was useful information. Hit like. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on the next video. Yeah.